In this video, notes video, you can fill in the blank. We're going to find increasing and decreasing intervals for each function. We're also going to look at the x values at which f, the function, has any relative extrema. And we're going to do this all by using the first derivative test. All right, so to use the first derivative test for this function, we need to find the first derivative. Graphs change from increasing to decreasing, or from decreasing to increasing, at relative extrema, at mins and maxes. And so for us to find any mins or maxes, we're going to need to locate where the derivative is equal to zero. Or it could be where the derivative does not exist, but in this particular problem, notice that the derivative exists everywhere. Uh, every x can be put in. There's no fractions, no squares, etc. So that's real important to kind of pay attention to. Also, you might, on the function itself, pay attention to the fact that the domain of the function is all real numbers. There's no breaks on that graph, and that's important to pay attention to, too. All right, to use the first derivative test, we have to find the first derivative. We have to find out where the first derivative is equal to 0 or does not exist. And remember, it does exist everywhere, so that's not an issue. Okay, so let's find the zero slopes. Set the derivative equal to zero. Um, I'm going to do two things in one step. I'm going to set the derivative, this derivative, equal to zero, and I'm also going to take out the six, because without a calculator, I want to make these numbers as manageable as possible, because I think I want to have to factor. So dividing out a six, pulling out the GCF, this should be six times quantity x squared plus x minus two. All right, so without a calculator, I'm going to continue to factor. Bring the 6 down. It looks like this is going to be x plus 2, and this will be x minus 1. All right, we're going to set each factor equal to 0. So 6 can't be equal to 0, but this factor results in us getting x equals negative 2. And then here, this factor equals 0. That results in us getting x equals 1. So both these x values, when plugged into the derivative, give you a 0 slope. There's potentially a min or a max at each of these x values on this graph right here. And if there's a min or a max, then we know the function is changing direction. Uh, but we still have more work to do. All we've done is we've identified the x values that belong on our f prime number line. All right, I'm going to put these x values on my f prime number line, but before I do that, just for notation's sa uh, sake, okay, both of these are our critical numbers. Okay, we say critical numbers, but we can say critical x values. These are the x values at which we have zero slopes. Okay, so what does this look like right here? Well, this just means that when you plug negative 2 into the derivative, you're going to get a zero. This is just notation that says, hey, the derivative at negative 2 is zero. Same thing here, f prime at 1 is equal to zero. All right, so the slope of these two x values on the function is 0. If I, for some reason, needed to know what the y values were at these critical x values, I would just plug these x values back into the original to get two points that are on the graph at which my slope is 0. Okay, do you have to do this? Well, I think you should for what we're doing just to practice good notation. Okay, we've identified the critical numbers that belong on our f prime number line. So I'm kind of paying attention to the domain of the given function. The domain for the given function okay, is all real numbers. All right, so when I'm going to build an f prime number line, I'm going to leave a little bit of space up here because this is actually going to be some, some working room for my, my f information. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say, okay, let me build an f prime number line. The domain for um, the function, the domain for the function is all real numbers. So on my f prime number line right here, um, I don't need to be concerned about um, you know, some x resulting in a break in the graph or a vertical asymptote. So I'm just going to show arrows on the edges of my graph. Okay, so the next thing we do is we put our critical numbers in order, negative 2 and 1. So these two critical numbers, critical x values, divide the partition, the f prime number line, into three sections. Okay, above negative 2, 
I'm going to indicate that I have a zero slope. And above 1, I'm going to indicate that I have a zero slope. All right, so from x equals negative infinity all the way up to negative 2, the function's either all increasing or all decreasing. It has to be doing one thing. Between the x values of negative 2 and positive 1 on the graph, okay, the function's either all increasing or all decreasing. And past the x value of 1, the function's either continuing to go up or continuing to go down. And I think we have a basic understanding of what this graph looks like, so we probably have a good idea that this cubic graph is going up, dips down, and goes back up. So if it's going up, these should be positive slopes, this should be negative slopes, and then these should be positive slopes. But we'll verify it with our FDT, our first derivative test. Okay, so I know this kind of showed up real quickly, but I think we, can, we finished the F prime number line by analyzing x values into our derivative. And so what I did was I had left some space above my f prime number line. I left some space for an f number line. Because we're using f prime to help us discuss what's happening on the f graph. Sometimes this f prime number line isn't real easy for students to kind of interpret and analyze. So I might suggest building an f number line. And think about the connections that we know. If f prime, the slope is positive, you know the function's increasing. So draw this number line. If the function f is increasing, draw an arrow that represents increasing. Or write the word increasing. Okay, past the critical number of negative 2 that I also put on the f number line. If f prime is negative, then the function's decreasing. Draw an arrow that represents decreasing, or write the word decreasing. Past the x value of 1, notice the slopes are all positive, which means you might want to draw a representation of the graph going up with an arrow, what I have here in black, or write the word increasing. I think the arrows really help you understand what the graph's doing. Um, I changed colors here, and I kind of connected my arrows. And in red, you can see kind of a graph that would depict what's happening with this equation right here. Your choice to do the F number line, I think it's just a, a real good visual, helps you understand what you're doing. At minimum, to use the first derivative test, we need to find the derivative like we did, establish the critical numbers, build the F prime number line like we did, and then from there, this isn't the answer to our problem right here. Okay, the F prime number line. Okay, it's using that to, to answer the questions of uh, increasing, de decreasing, and uh, relative extrema. All right, so based on our f prime number line, you'd come down here and let's respond to what's being asked of us. Okay, the function f, not f prime, the function f. Okay, f is increasing. I'm going to abbreviate. That's okay for you to do the same. On negative infinity up to negative 2. There's debate whether we should use bracket or parentheses. We're just going to use parentheses. I'm going to put a comma here. It's also increasing from 1 to infinity. Let's justify. I'm going to put because f prime is positive. If f is increasing, then f prime must be a positive number. f is decreasing on the x interval between negative 2 and 1. If you're asked to justify, well, the reason a function is decreasing is because the slope is negative. Do we have any relative extrema? Yeah, we do. So we're talking about the function. I'm going to abbreviate. As I analyze the slopes from left to right, I see there's a change in signs. So f, the function, has a relative max at x equals negative 2. I know this is a max and not a min because the slopes go from, you can see on the visual here too, it's maximum. Uh, it's all about the slopes. And I'm going to abbreviate the because. f prime, the slopes, 
goes from positive, f prime goes from ah, positive to negative. All right, do we have a change in signs on the derivatives? Another change in sign? Yeah, we do. Add a critical number. So f has a relative min. And we can see from the visual of the function, there's a low spot, at x equals 1 because, not because the function goes from decreasing to increasing. I mean, that's true, but it's all about, in calculus, the slopes, because f prime changes from a negative slope to a positive slope. All right, so we discussed increasing, decreasing intervals. We also discussed any relative extrema, extrema that this function had. All right, example two. All right, notice we went from a polynomial function to a radical function. And our third example is going to be a rational function. So polynomial, radical, and rational. This is radical. All right, notice that the root is an odd number. So I don't have to worry about a limitation on any x. I can have a cube root of a negative number. I can have a fifth root of a negative number. I can have an odd root of any negative number. It's the even roots that you have to be careful about that produce imaginary numbers. I think it's all worth uh, thinking about as you study this problem. You might want to also take this and put it into your calculator in Y1 and produce a graph so that the math makes sense to you uh, once we get it. All right, let's figure out what this graph is going up, going down, if it has any mins or maxes on the graph. So that's all through the first derivative test. The first thing I identify is that the domain of the function is all real numbers. All right, to get it ready for differentiation, because I need the first derivative, I'm going to rewrite it as a rational exponent, and I'm going to apply the chain rule. And the derivative of the inside, I'm not forgetting that. It just happens to be 1, so I'm going to leave it alone at this point. I'm going to clean this derivative up, make it a fraction. So it appears that everything goes to the denominator. So I'm left with the 1 on top. All right, so we're looking for critical numbers. Well, what's going to make this derivative equal 0? All right, since this is an interesting derivative, it might help to organize our work this way. Um, let's let f, um, excuse me, f prime of some x equals 0, or just where is f prime 0? Well, it's where the numerator equals 0. Okay, or you could just set 0 equal to the derivative right here. Do cross products. I believe that's supposed to be a square on there. Yeah, I don't know if it was there and it just disappeared or if I didn't have it there at first, but it needs to be there because of that exponent. Okay, uh, cross multiply. So this results in us getting 0 equals 1. Well, we know that's a false statement. Does not equal. So what that means is that the derivative will never equal 0. Yeah. Derivatives never equal 0. Hmm. All right, so let's also see explore the other type of critical number, and that's where f prime of some x is, does not exist. Okay, so for this problem, we need to be concerned about that because we have a fraction. So a does not exist situation is 1 over 0. All right, we're going to do the cross multiply here. I'll probably divide both sides by 3. That will result in us getting rid of the factor of 3. But I still have the cube root. I'm trying to figure out the x that makes this uh, denominator 0. Oh, brother. Uh, cube both sides. If I cube both sides, I'm going to get the radicand. 0 cubed is still 0. Uh, square root both sides now. 
it's nice working with the zero and add to the other side. So I've just solved this algebraically. It appears that if x is 1 up here, that I'd be dividing by 0, and I don't want that. Okay. So it appears to me that as a result of this, I can say then that f prime of 1 is a critical number. x equals 1 is a critical number. f prime of 1 is, um, does not exist. If you plug 1 into the derivative back up here, you're going to get 1 divided by 0. The first derivative would not exist. Okay. So 1 does work in the original function. There's a point on the graph when x is 1, but since there's a point there and the derivative doesn't exist, it's a critical number. All right. Okay, so all of this work just tells us what belongs on your number line. Well, let me come back up here. Save a little space for the f number line if you choose. Okay, I noticed the domain of the function is all real numbers, so I'll draw the entire real number line with arrows. Uh, the critical numbers are just at x equals 1. And notice above this, I'm not going to put 0 because it's not a 0 slope. I'm going to put it, it's a does not exist slope. It's a sharp turn or it's a vertical tangent. All right, let's do some test values. f prime to the left of 1, a 0 is a good test. Plug in 0 to the derivative. Plug in 0 to the derivative. Well, the output is always going to be positive because no matter what down here, you're going to square this number. The result would always be positive. So any replacement into the first derivative, any numeric replacement, any x value into the derivative is going to make this uh, a positive output. So I can come over here and show that I'm going to plug in 2, but it won't matter. The result is positive. Let's think about what's going on with the graph before I analyze this and answer the requested questions. Okay, it says that um, the slopes are all positive. Ah! And put the critical number on here too. This is a does not exist. Okay, so the function's going up, increasing. We have a does not exist situation but then the graph keeps going up. All right, another arrow that's going up. Okay, well, I guess I could draw it right here. Okay, so it's also increasing. All right, so the function's going up, 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 but then it continues to go up with the does not exist slope. That's got to be a vertical tangent. So I'm going to try to make this pretty steep, and then the graph continues to go up. It doesn't show it, but what it should look like, if you graph it on your calculator, you're going to see that it's uh, very steep right here. So sometimes the arrows help you, and sometimes they kind of hinder you because they're kind of side by side here, but the function's always increasing even through its vertical tangent line. All right. Back to the question. All right, well, we're talking about f. f is increasing on all real numbers because, now think about this one's a little different than example one, f prime is positive or f prime does not exist at that 1x value. So you really kind of have to pay attention to what you're doing here to report the answer. So in most cases, except for 1x value, the slope is always positive, but there is one time at x equals 1 where the slope did not exist, which means it's a vertical tangent, but the function can still increase through that vertical tangent. The function never decreases, so you don't have to say anything. Do we have any mins or maxes? Well, look at the f prime number line. Do your slopes ever change? Signs? Nope. No mins, no maxes. You don't have to say anything. But if it makes you feel better, you can put no relative extrema. All right, so we looked at a polynomial function that was kind of well behaved. We looked at a radical function, and in the third and final example, we're going to look at a rational function, a function that has some, um, uh, it has a fraction.